Back here at the finish line of the Boilermaker, the 37th edition of the Boilermaker, Boilermaker 2014. And uh, guys, this race almost didn't happen. This was the dominant story last evening. Was there going to be another severe thunderstorm, uh, lightning, high winds that would cancel this race? Of course, race officials getting together at about 5 this morning and making the determination that it was going to be safe to run. And as we see, about uh, two hours now from the start time of, uh, of this year's race, uh, we have not seen any rain, and this this is 36 years running, no rain during the Boilermaker. Uh, talking about the con conditions, Roger, you joked uh, prior to the uh, the race this morning, runners are never happy with the conditions, regardless of what they are. No, you heard some of them today saying it was too hot, it was too humid. <laughs> That's, I was right, wasn't I? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, there was a nice breeze, but uh, I guess in their defense it was quite muggy this morning. Uh, so the race did go off. And uh, a couple of uh, big wins here. We have Mary with Sarah on the women's side staying undefeated. And, uh, and uh, you had the play-by-play -play coverage, of course, from start to finish uh, on the men's side. Yeah, can I just uh, roll back to your point about the cancellation? And something that I wrote about after the New York Marathon was canceled two years ago because of uh, Hurricane Sandy is that when I was first in running 30, 40 years ago, you could cancel a race and nobody would notice, you know, because there were only 150 of us. Nobody cared less, and mostly we would go ahead in any conditions because we were so small. Now, this, the seriousness of a cancellation, its, eco its impact economically and socially is so great because the numbers are so great. So this, again, is not exactly a downsize, downside of running success, but, but something that running has to cope with. You know, that's, that's what I wrote about it. So we have now to realize that we, were, we are big enough to be important. And that's why Mayor Bloomberg tried to keep that New York Marathon going mm -hmm. that year because of the, its economic value to the city. Well, here we are. We, we thought we were just a funny little sport. And it turns out we're a major social movement with a major impact, major economic impact on one of the biggest cities in the world. Just to make that point, that that's, yeah, it all, it's growing. all part of the and size. Growing, yeah. It's all part of the size implication of, of the sport. Then, just to go back to it, the elite race, um, yeah, as I said when I was talking to Dick Mateer, the elite coordinator, uh, I personally am not interested in records, or barely. I think if you define a sport only by records, you're going to make it very narrow. You're only going to get excited once every five years. You can't have a record every time, but you can have a great race every time. It's about racing. And what pleased me about today, they weren't, neither race was especially fast in the, in the big picture of the history of this race, but they were fascinating tactically, and they were both taken control of by runners who chose their moment, knew how to pace it, broke the pack, broke the pack up, then got it down to two or three, and then chose their moments to, to, to win winnow it down until finally they were on their own. Uh, Mary left it later than Jeffrey did. Jeffrey went early, just, as, uh, just coming down the end of Champlain. Mary left it to the beginning of the last hill, as she told you. But they were both really fascinating tactical races, and the challenge is always for a runner to get the best out of himself or herself and make the others do it at their worst, if you see what I mean. That's what tactics means in Absolutely. any sport. So it was great. They were great, both great races from that point of view. Uh, really uh, great, and Jim Rondinelli, this is your... Is this your 20th? Do I 32nd actually? Your 32nd Boilermaker, my 20th. I imagine I during the, uh, I imagine well during the pre race to Roger, even though it's been that many years, it's always like it's a brand new race. It's always exciting on that morning. And to get back, piggyback on the weather thought, uh, I talked to Jim Societis, who said there were a lot of sleepless committee members last night. And, uh, you know, I remember waking up at four o'clock and you know thinking hey is this race even going to go on it would have been a shame if they had to cancel this race and it, it, it did go on thankfully we had a great race but this will always be remember i'll always remember this as the race that almost wasn't <laughs> absolutely uh jim rondinelli roger robinson uh, both of you fantastic job we look forward next year to the return of Catherine Switzer. That's true. I can almost guarantee it. She's certainly missing us. And, and Jeff, can I just in, interpose there and say also from my point of view as your as your visitor, you and Luke did great jobs out on the course today. Thank you. And, and it was really made our job a lot easier but also more vivid. It made because you you built the picture for us in a way that we couldn't do ourselves from sitting at the finish line. So So thanks to you for the work you did out on the course. Jim Rondinelli, Roger Robinson, great job, guys, and uh, we look forward to seeing everyone next year, which will be the 38th edition of the Boilermaker in 2015. Full stories, results, videos, photos on our website, wibx950.com. Also follow us on Facebook and Twitter.